Introducing Mr. Thaddeus K. Smith, a man with a problem. He's always losing something, or so he says. Somebody is always putting things where he can't find them. Why, right this morning, he put an important contract on his desk, along with his hat, his wife's unpaid bills, some new shoelaces, and the morning paper. Why isn't that contract there, he wants to know. Or maybe it is. Look again. Now, young lady, where is that contract? On the desk? Impossible. See, it's not there. Maybe you filed it in the wastebasket. This is outrageous. If that contract isn't in the mail before o'clock, this concern will lose the biggest order it ever had. Well, that's better. Must have gotten mixed up. Yes, something certainly is mixed up, and it's Thaddeus Smith. If you don't believe it, look at this homey little place. You don't need three guesses to tell you that this is where the family of Thaddeus K. Smith lives. An attempt to negotiate an out-of-court settlement of legal difficulties between the couple. The weather forecast for Los Angeles and vicinity scattered high cloudiness today, tonight, and Thursday with early morning fog near the coast. Slightly warmer today with a high near 80. And that is the news till now. I'll return at 6 o'clock this evening. You'd better hurry up, Marjorie. You'll be late for school. All right, Mother. In a minute. Mary. Mary. Where on earth is my gray suit? Your gray suit? Isn't it at the cleaners? I thought you took it there yourself. Certainly I took it there myself, but that was last week. You mean to tell me no one's gone to get it for me? Oh, well, I'll wear my brown one. Mother, have you seen my sweater? Uh, it's right there on that chair. Where? Well, right here. Will you hand it to me? Oh, for heaven's sake, take it. Thank you. Hey, Mom, I can't find my hair oil. Have you seen it? What did you say? Hair oil. I can't find it. It was on the top of your bureau yesterday. Isn't it there now? No, and I wish people had stopped. Oh, never mind. I found it. Isn't breakfast ready yet? In a minute, dear. No. Oh. Did anybody remember to feed the dog? No wonder Mr. Smith is in a turmoil most of the time. Now we're going to look in on their neighbors. You see, this is a real home, belonging to the entire family, where every member has a pride of ownership. Good morning. My, but this is a welcome relief. This young lady is getting ready for school, too, but she has her day well planned. She arises in time to straighten up her room, hang up her clothes, and be at breakfast on schedule. Taking care of her room is one of her obligations in this household. Junior has already completed his household chores for the morning, so he can spend some time on his hobby. Notice how his equipment is carefully kept. He won't be searching for a lost spool or hook. There are strict orders in this house for no one to touch this desk. And those orders are respected by all. Yes, this looks like a pretty good way to start things out in the morning. No rush, no fussing. Every member of the family has fulfilled his or her obligations, and each one will go out to the day's work better able to cope with its problems. This is a good time to remind you that you owe another obligation to your health. A good breakfast is the proper foundation for the activities of a busy day. And there's no worry about lunch either. Sis takes care of that department making the lunches the night before. It gives her a chance to practice some of the ideas she gets in her homemaking classes. Yes, 
they're on their way with a good breakfast and what's more important, a good disposition. We have seen this family start today. Now let's see what happens after school. Hmm, only four o'clock and he's doing tonight's homework. What's wrong with these two anyway? Do they have to study all afternoon and evening? No, they just want to hear a special broadcast tonight. So they're hard at work, each in his or her room. No outside interference and no radio now. This boy and girl both consider their schoolwork one of their most important obligations to themselves and their family. Now that their homework is finished and the dinner dish is put away, this boy and girl have ample time to enjoy their favorite programs. Let me repeat, they are enjoying the program. Mother and father are enjoying a bridge game with some friends. One of the principal rules in this house is that a radio or phonograph is heard only in the room in which it is played, so that only those who wish to listen may do so. Well, it looks like that's all for tonight. Forget something? But it's not all for Sis. She's appointed herself chairman of the refreshment committee. This is mother's and father's night, and daughter wants to help them enjoy it. Also, daughter feels it is one of her obligations to be gracious to her parents' friends. She's glad to help mother entertain because mother never fails to help her play hostess to her friends. This is another of brother's obligations and pleasures. He takes pride in keeping the car clean and shining, and in return, he gets to use it for certain occasions. This is a family car in every sense of the word. So the men of the family do their best to keep it looking like new. And the women of the family don't shirk their cleaning tasks either. Yes, this is a busy day for all concerned. Brother shows his ability as a gardener. Here's another gardener. This particular patch belongs to Sis and to nobody else. She prides herself on her green thumb, which in garden talk means she's a success at growing things. It looks like everything is ready for the weekend. Since these young people have shared in the work and responsibilities of the house, they can also share in the pleasures of entertaining their friends. Say, that's a shame. And she's late for a tennis date, too. How about it, brother? Will you lend her your racket? You will? That's the kind of a brother to have. Sharing personal belongings in this family is a common practice because every member feels an obligation as a borrower to the lender. Yes, Sis takes care of things loaned to her. 
She knows that brother would have to pay for a restringing job out of his allowance, and she's going to save him every dime she can. And speaking of money, this family has worked out a program that should please any boy and girl, and at the same time make better citizens out of them. The share of family money given to each one for personal use is divided into three parts. Some to save for saving's sake, and there is a steady record of deposits. Some to save for something they want, a new sweater for her wardrobe, perhaps. For brother, a new trout rod. Then there is some left to spend for amusement, the usual sodas and cokes and picture shows. It's up to brother and sister to decide how much they will allocate for each purpose. They manage their own funds, and in doing so, learn the value of money. In this family, the members have learned to live with each other by understanding their obligations and fulfilling them. They cooperate by making each other's chores as light as possible. They are able to enjoy life more because they have more time for enjoyment and the feeling that tasks assigned to them have been accomplished. They are alert to the problems which confront all of us and they will be prepared to cope with each problem as it arises they have a sense of security because they understand the value of money and other material things assigned to their care. This boy and girl are going to be well equipped when the time comes to take their places as worthy members of adult society. How about going back over what we've seen? Our goal is, obviously, to avoid becoming another case like Mr. Smith, a man whose present sad condition could have been avoided if he had learned when young how to organize his life, how to handle his obligations. A family in a state of perpetual chaos is really just a family which isn't living up to its own responsibilities. What you can do to avoid turning out to be like the Smiths is not so hard. Learn to take care of your own possessions. Keep your own room neat, clean, habitable. It's an obligation you owe your family and yourself. Learn to get up in the morning early enough to have a pleasant, satisfactory meal before the day begins. So you'll start off in good health and good spirits. And while we're at it, we may as well remind you that you'll live most of your life to some sort of a schedule. If you learn to keep that schedule so that it doesn't get ahead of you, you won't mind living by the clock. One of your chief obligations is to pay close attention to your studies during school years. Presumably your parents send you to school to get everything possible out of the experience, not merely to comply with the law. It's your obligation to make the most of school now. It will reward you well when you're earning your own living. The problem of allocating radio and television time can get to be a sore point with any family. To avoid trouble, do your chores and homework first. Then take time off for your favorite programs. And when you're listening, remember, keep it to yourself. Don't let it bother others. When mother and dad entertain, remember that you share the role of host. It's your home too. And they want you to be part of the pride they feel in it. Meet their guests graciously.
Speaking of pride in your home, don't wait to be reminded that the yard needs cleaning up. After all, if you're going to entertain, you'll want your home to look its best. Your friends won't mind if your home is modest, but they will if it's unkempt. That's a condition you can change. Any time you must, in emergency, borrow the possessions of some other member of the family, make sure you take good care of them and return them on time. It's an obligation you owe to their owners, don't you think? One of your principal obligations is to systematize your saving so that when you see something you really need or very much want, you won't have to beg dad for it or borrow on next week's allowance. Learning to take care of family obligations in early years is easy. After all, it's only a matter of getting into a pattern of good living habits. Once they become habits, you needn't worry about them. Take care of your obligations now. And when you meet the responsibilities of adult life, you'll find that they will take care of you. Thank you.